10 famous pickup trucks that disappeared off the road. Ever wondered what happened to those iconic pickup trucks that used to rule the roads? From muscle truck marvels to innovative haulers, these legends vanished, leaving us with nothing but memories and a burning question. Why? Let's find out. In this video, we are diving into the mysterious disappearance of 10 famous pickup trucks that vanished from our highways. So, make sure to stick around till the end. Number 10. 1948. Dodge B-Series The B-Series was Dodge's statement piece in the rapidly evolving post-war automotive landscape. It introduced the Pilot House cab design. The Pilot House cab offered improved visibility thanks to larger windows and a more upright seating position. The B-Series comes with a rubber-mounted cab that reduces vibrations and noise. It could comfortably seat three passengers, which was a big deal back then, under the hood, the B-Series offered a range of engines to suit different needs. The half-ton B1B trucks had a flathead straight-six engine that produced 95 horsepower. If you needed more grunt, the three-quarter-ton B1C trucks packed a standard flathead straight-six generating 108 horsepower. These engines might not sound impressive by today's standards, but in 1948, they were more than capable of getting the job done. So, why did this innovative truck disappear? Like all good things, it had to make way for progress. The B-Series was produced until 1953, when the Dodge C-Series replaced it. Changing market dynamics, evolving preferences, and advancements in truck technology all contributed to its gradual fade from the roads. Number 9. Chevrolet El Camino, 1970-1987 Born in 1959, the El Camino hit its stride in the 1970s. It combined the comfort of a car with the utility of a pickup, making it the Swiss army knife of vehicles. The El Camino's smooth ride and sporty design made it stand out. It wasn't just a workhorse, it was a show pony, too. The El Camino was equipped with powerful V8 engines, turning this utility vehicle into a muscle car with a bed. The 1980s saw a shift in consumer preferences. People wanted either full-sized trucks for serious hauling or fuel-efficient cars for commuting. Finally, the production of El Camino ended in 1987. Number 8. Ford Ranchero, 1957-1979 If the El Camino was Chevy's mullet, the Ford Ranchero was Ford's answer to the question. What if we made a truck? But not really. Introduced in 1957, Two years before the El Camino, the Ranchero was the original car-truck hybrid. The Ranchero's claim to fame was its innovative design. It took the front end of a car initially based on the full-sized Ford platform and married it to a truck bed. This created a vehicle that could haul like a truck but drive like a car. Throughout its production, the Ranchero underwent several transformations. It started life as a full-sized vehicle then shrunk to a compact in the 1960s before, growing again in the 1970s. This adaptability helped it stay relevant for over two decades. The Ranchero was particularly popular in the 1960s and 1970s. It offered a unique blend of style and utility that appealed to many buyers. Like its Chevy counterpart, the Ranchero fell victim to changing market trends. The Ranchero's middle ground appeal waned as consumers gravitated towards either full-size trucks or more fuel-efficient cars. Production ceased in 1979, marking the end of an era. Number 7. Dodge Dakota, 1987-2011 Introduced in 1987, Dakota carved out a niche as one of the first mid-size pickups on the market. It bridged the gap between compact trucks and full-size models making it popular with drivers who needed more cargo space than a compact truck could offer, but didn't want the bulk of a full-size pickup. It was the pickup for people who found the Ford Ranger too small and the Ram 1500 too large. In 1989, it became the first mid-size truck to offer a V8 engine option. This gave it a performance edge over many competitors in its class, appealing to buyers who wanted more power 
and towing capability without stepping up to a full-size truck. Throughout its production run, the Dakota was known for offering innovative features. In 2000, it introduced the quad cab, which provided increased passenger space and comfort. The Dakota RT, introduced in 1998, was a performance model that could give some sports cars a run for their money. And let's not forget the insane Dakota SRT-10, produced from 2005 to 2006, which packed a 500-horsepower V10 engine from the Dodge Viper. Despite its versatility and innovation, the Dakota couldn't escape the changing market dynamics. As fuel prices rose and full-size trucks became more efficient, the need for mid-size trucks diminished. Dodge discontinued the Dakota in 2011, leaving a gap in their lineup that wouldn't be filled until the introduction of the Jeep Gladiator years later. Number 6. Ford Ranger 1983-2011, reintroduced in 2018. This compact pickup truck was a staple on American roads for nearly three decades before taking a brief hiatus and then making a triumphant return. Introduced in 1983, the Ranger quickly became America's sweetheart in the compact truck market. It was the pickup for people who didn't need a pickup every day, but wanted the option to haul stuff when needed. Perfect for weekend warriors and urban dwellers alike. Over the years, it offered a range of engines, from fuel-sipping four-cylinders to more robust V6. This variety meant there was a Ranger for every need and budget. For off-road enthusiasts, Ford offers various 4 r 4 packages. The Ranger could tackle trails that would make some larger trucks think twice. It was like a mountain goat in pickup form. Nimble, sure-footed, and able to go places others couldn't. So why did Ford park the Ranger in 2011? The official line was that the compact truck market was shrinking and Ford wanted to focus on its full-size F-150. However, absence made the heart grow fonder, and after a seven-year hiatus, Ford brought the Ranger back in 2018. Number 5. GMC Sonoma, 1982-2004 Produced from 1982 to 2004, the Sonoma was GMC's version of the Chevrolet S10, offering a rugged build and dependable performance in a compact package. What made the Sonoma stand out in a crowded pickup market? For starters, it was affordable. In a world where truck prices were climbing faster than a mountain goat on espresso, the Sonoma remained reasonably priced. GMC offered a range of engines, from a fuel-sipping 2.2-liter four-cylinder to a more robust 4.3-liter V6. This meant you could choose between economical daily driving or more powerful hauling and towing. Throughout its production run, the Sonoma evolved with the times. Its design changed from the boxy look of the 80s to the more rounded appearance of the 90s and early 2000s. As the new millennium rolled in, the compact truck market changed. Consumers gravitated towards larger, more powerful trucks. The Sonoma, despite its versatility, found itself overshadowed by its bigger siblings. In 2004, GMC replaced the Sonoma with the Canyon, a larger, more modern pickup. Number 4. GMC Cyclone, 1991 It's 1991, and GMC decides to take their humble Sonoma pickup and give it enough power to embarrass Ferraris. The Cyclone, a pickup truck that could go from 0 to 60 mapliqueers in just 4.3 seconds. This truck was faster off the line than a contemporary Ferrari 348. At the heart of this speed demon was a 4.3-liter turbocharged Vortec V6 engine. This power plant was a marvel, producing 280 horsepower and 350 lb-ft of torque. In the early 90s, those were supercar numbers. But GMC didn't stop there. They paired this engine with a four-speed automatic transmission and, crucially, an all-wheel drive system. This meant the Cyclone could put all that power to the ground without turning its tires into smoke. As amazing as the Cyclone was, it had some significant drawbacks. Its performance came at the cost of utility. It could only tow 2,000 pounds, 
less than half of what a standard Sonoma could manage. Its payload capacity was similarly reduced. In essence, GMC had created a pickup truck that couldn't really do pickup truck things. Moreover, at nearly $26,000, the Cyclone was expensive for its time. That price tag, combined with its limited practicality, meant that GMC only produced 2,995 Cyclones in 1991. By 1992, the model was discontinued. Number 3. 1984. Toyota Truck This truck gained its reputation for toughness in the harshest conditions imaginable. During the 1987 Toyota War in Chad, this truck, supplied by France, showcased their legendary reliability in desert combat. Only three were lost, cementing their reputation in the automotive world. It excelled in various roles, from hauling cargo to navigating rough terrains. Its robust construction and straightforward design made it a favorite among diverse drivers, from farmers to adventure seekers. Under the hood, the Toyota truck offered a range of engine options to suit different needs. The base model came with a naturally aspirated 2.4-liter .4 four-cylinder engine, pumping out between 102 to 117 horsepower and 132 to 140 lbft of torque. If that wasn't enough, you could opt for the turbocharged version, which bumped the output to 135 horsepower and 173 lbft of torque. For those who wanted even more power, there was a 3.0-liter V6 option, delivering 145 horsepower and 180 lbft of torque. This truck didn't disappear so much as it evolved. Changing safety regulations, emissions standards, and consumer preferences led to the development of newer models. The spirit of the 1984 Toyota truck lives on in today's Toyota Tacoma and Hilux models, but the simple, rugged charm of the original has become a thing of the past. Number 2. Uh, 1999. Ford SVT F150 Lightning. The Lightning struck the automotive world in 1999, marking the return of Ford's performance pickup after a brief hiatus. This beast's heart was a 5.4-liter Triton V8 engine, force-fed by an Eaton supercharger. This power plant was churning out a jaw-dropping 360 horsepower and 440 lbft of torque. But the Lightning wasn't just about straight-line speed. Ford's special vehicle team, SVT, gave this truck a complete performance makeover. They lowered the suspension, beefed up the brakes, and added performance-tuned shocks. The Lightning's performance was electrifying. It could sprint from Vareo to 60 Hanapaya in just 6.2 seconds. With its aggressive front grille, side exhaust, and unique wheels, the Lightning had a menacing presence that telegraphed its performance intentions. The Lightning also faced some challenges. It lacked the practicality of a traditional pickup with limited towing capacity and off-road capability. As the truck market shifted toward more versatile, do-it-all pickups, the single-purpose Lightning found itself out of step. Number 1. Nissan Hardbody D21 1986-1997 When it comes to tough trucks with cool nicknames, few can match the Nissan Hardbody. Produced from 1986 to 1997, this pickup earned its hard body moniker. Honestly, it was built like a brick house on wheels. The name referred to its double-walled bed, firm body panels, and overall rugged construction. In a world of flimsy, rust-prone trucks, the hard body was the bodybuilder of the bunch. The D21 hard body replaced the Datsun 720 and marked Nissan's shift away from the Datsun brand in the US market. It featured a distinctive, boxy design that screamed 80s and 90s cool. With its square cut fenders and aggressive stance, the hard body looked tough enough to eat nails for breakfast. Nissan offered a range of engines under the hood to suit different needs. The base model came with a 2.4-liter .4 four-cylinder engine, perfect for those who prioritized fuel economy. 3.0-liter V6 was available, providing a good balance of power and efficiency for its class. As the 90s wore on, consumer preferences shifted towards larger, more comfortable trucks. 
the compact truck market was shrinking, and Nissan decided to go bigger. In 1997, the hard body was replaced by the larger Frontier in North America. Which of these classic trucks would you love to see make a comeback? Let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel 